Hello and welcome to Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan and here are your latest news headlines from around the world. A group of Catholics in Chile launched a rosary campaign on Saturday ahead of the country's drafting of a new constitution. The campaign, entitled Un Rosario per Chile, invites Catholics to pray the rosary for 120 days and will conclude on April 10, 2021. In the concluding document of the 121st Plenary Assembly of the Bishops' Conference of Chile, the nation's bishops had called for prayer among the faithful so that, quote, the values of the gospel may be present in the new constitution of Chile. National campaign coordinator Andres Jimenez Peterson stated, quote, from the beginning of our nation, in the face of transcendental difficulties or events, Chileans have come to the Blessed Virgin praying with devotion. We therefore urge all Catholics to unite in this campaign, trusting that their mediation will bring us the divine graces necessary for this moment in history. This comes after Chileans voted by referendum to repeal the current constitution, drafted by the regime of Augusto Pinochet in 1980. Members elected to the Constitutional Assembly in April of next year will be responsible for drafting the new constitution. It too, however, must be voted on by the Chilean public. If accepted, the new constitution will come into force in 2022. In Nigeria, a kidnapped priest, Father Valentine Oluchuku Eziagu, was released by his captors on Thursday. Father Valentine, who is a member of the Sons of Mary, Mother of Mercy, was abducted on December the 16th while travelling to attend his father's funeral in Igbuoku village. The news of Father Valentine's release was communicated by the Secretary General of the congregation, Father Goodluck Ajiaro, who expressed, quote, We are very grateful to God who touched the hearts of the kidnappers to release our brother. Continuing, Father Ajaero said, We pray for the conversion of the kidnappers and all those that are into various crimes. A funeral mass has taken place in Poland for 640 unborn children. The mass was celebrated by Bishop Kazimierz Gurda of Szedlce in the village of Gonshice on Saturday past. During his homily, the bishop said, quote, These children have the right to a worthy burial, as they are persons from the moment of conception. The right to life is a right that cannot be taken away from anyone, including and above all from a defenceless child in the womb. Upon the conclusion of the Mass, the children were buried in a nearby cemetery. The Mass was offered at a time when abortion is once again the subject of forceful debate in Poland. On October the 22nd, Poland's Constitutional Court declared that a law allowing for abortions in case of fetal abnormalities was unconstitutional. The ruling prompted protests nationwide, with church buildings and statues being vandalised. In response to the protests, the Polish government delayed the publication of the court's ruling. The ruling must appear in the country's Journal of Laws to be rendered active. Meanwhile, in the United States, the state of Arkansas was named on Wednesday as the most pro-life state in the country by pro-life organization Americans United for Life. The group ranks states according to legal protections in state law for the unborn, the elderly, the disabled and the terminally ill. Reacting to the announcement on Twitter, the Lieutenant Governor of Arkansas, Tim Griffin, commented, Arkansans value the sanctity of human life and want their elected leaders to implement laws protecting society's most vulnerable members. I will continue working to foster a culture that respects and treasures human life. Abortion rates in the state have halved since the year 2000, with over 30 pregnancy resource centres now open in the state in order to assist women with unplanned pregnancies. On Sunday, December the 13th, the Catholic Church in Singapore marked the beginning of a year-long commemoration of the 200th anniversary of the arrival of the faith in the country. It was on December the 11th, 1821, that the French priest Father Laurent Imbert of the Paris Foreign Mission Society came to what was then a trading post of the British Empire. His letter to Bishop Florence is considered to mark the beginning of the Catholic Church in Singapore. Father Imbert is numbered among the 103 Korean martyrs canonised by Pope St John Paul II in 1984. The year-long celebration will include a variety of initiatives and events, such as the Caritas Singapore Initiative and the World Day of Migrants and Refugees, which is to be held in collaboration with foreign Catholic communities. The year's celebrations will conclude with an eight-day festival in December of next year, coming to a close on December the 11th, with all parishes in Singapore celebrating Holy Mass at the same time. Meanwhile, in Naples, the blood of St Januarius failed to liquefy on Wednesday, December the 16th. The date marks the anniversary in which the city of Naples was spared from the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 1631. There are about three days in the year in which the normally solidified blood of the saint often liquefies. 
Saint Januarius was the Bishop of Benevento and is the patron saint of Naples. He is believed to have been martyred during the reign of the Roman Emperor Diocletian at the beginning of the 4th century. His blood and bones are kept in the city's cathedral as relics. The blood liquefied both in May and September of this year. And finally, Hungary passed a constitutional amendment on Tuesday underlying the role of families and protecting the rights of children to identify according to their birth sex. The amendment to the Basic Law of Hungary was adopted by the Hungarian Parliament on Tuesday. The vote was carried by 134 to 45, with five abstentions. The new amendment explains that mother and father roles are distinct and sex-specific. The amendment also states that, quote, Hungary defends the right of children to identify with their birth gender and ensures their upbringing based on our nation's constitutional identity and values based on our Christian culture. Hungary's adoption laws have also been tightened, leaving adoption open to married couples alone. And those are your news headlines for today. David will be back to bring you the latest news from around the world next week. But from me, God bless you and Shalom.